All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lisa Bug Yoga for Hips. And we're also focusing by special request on hands and wrists today. I have a chair because sometimes some of these things can be performed on a chair with a little bit more ease. I also have um, just a little bit of padding because we're going to spend some time on our knees today. If that feels more comfortable with you, maybe just have a little cushion or a blanket that you can cushion your knees with. All right, so we're going to be standing for our first set of exercises here, just nice and tall through our spine. And I just want you to shift your body weight from one foot and pick up the heel of the other foot. And then just slide your body weight over to the other foot and you're just picking up the heel. So all we're doing is transferring weight side to side. Then we're just going to start to warm up the arms a little bit. And this is kind of uh, reminiscent of Tai Chi. So as we shift off to the left foot, just want you to open your hand out to the side, palm up. And then as you shift your body weight into the right foot, you'll just open up that right hand to the side. So it's a little bit like our waving hands like clouds that we do in Tai Chi. So what we're going to do this with this is palm up on one on each side and then palm down one on each side. So the shoulder position doesn't change very much. It's just in the rotation of your forearm. So we call palm up, palm up, and then palm down, palm down. And just do these at your own pace. So we're gonna wake up our brain a little bit here this morning as we move. And then instead of the palm being open, whether it's up or down, I want you to clench a fist. So as we shift to one side, palm up, make a fist. Another hand, make a fist. Then palm down, make a fist. And down. Good, let's do a couple more of those on each side. And it's up to you how hard you want to clench the fist. It doesn't have to be a 10 out of 10. Maybe a three or a four. Just strengthening those finger muscles a bit. And you're feeling some work in your forearms, maybe even in your biceps. Once you've finished that last side, we'll just come back to bear even weight. And then pick up your right foot and turn the top of your foot to the floor. Now you might need to hold on to something here because this is going to challenge our balance. So we're stretching the top of the foot, bend your elbows about 90 degrees, rotate your palms up. And we're just going to move down and up right from the forearm. Whoop, there I go with balance. Good, just a couple more down and up. And then hold your palms up. I want you to flip your fingers down and up toward the ceiling. If you're struggling with balance, just come back to both feet. Flex and up. Two more. Flex and up. And then relax the arms down. Put your foot back on the ground. Shift your body weight into the right foot. Try to take the top of your left foot down. And you're putting a little bit of pressure into that, feeling that stretch in the foot. Now bring your palms facing each other. Turn your fingers down toward the floor and then up. But we're not moving the forearm. You're just going with your wrist basically in kind of a lateral flexion side to side. Good. Now that you've got that action, what I want you to do is tuck your thumbs inside the palm of your hand and just gently wrap your fingers around your thumb. Now go down with the knuckles, up with the knuckles. So this movement going down with the knuckles is actually a test for tendonitis in your thumb in that first joint. So if you're feeling this is painful, just go in an easy range of motion here. 
Don't overdo it. Good, two more of these. And one more. Relax, come back to both feet. Good, just shake out your legs a little bit. Shake out the arms. So that's a little preview of some of the things we're gonna be doing next month when we work on hips and hands. So if you're seeing me later on YouTube, for next month, you're gonna have a little small ball or a stress ball that we're gonna be working with next month. Okay, come to the top of your mat. Feet about hips distance apart. I just want you to let your arms come forward as you sit your hips back into chair pose. And just pause there for a moment. If this doesn't feel okay for your shoulders, your hands can be in at your heart. If you like a bigger shoulder movement, your arms can float up a little higher at any amount. Check to make sure your knees are tracking right over the center of the feet, those middle toes. And then as we come up, Push your palms back behind you and open up your chest. Now, once we hold this, I want you to look to the right side and then look to the middle, look to the left side and look to the middle. Sit back down into chair, any arm position, inhale. Exhale, come up, pressing your palms back. Look to the right. Sit into chair, looking forward. Exhale up, looking left. So just alternating sides. Chair pose, little airplane arms with the neck rotation. Should feel a nice heart opener through the chest muscles, through the fronts of the shoulders, and a nice little squeeze right between your shoulder blades. And you're picking the pace here. Make sure you're breathing. Let's do one more on each side. Looking left for our last one. And then just sitting into chair to hold. Now at the beginning of the class, we shifted our body weight to one side and we lifted up the heel, but we had straight legs. We're gonna try that here. So shift your body weight into your right foot, lift up your left heel, and then shift your body weight into your left foot, pick up your right heel. Arms can come down if you need. Shifting side to side. So when you pick up your heel, you still have a little weight in that foot, right? But I want you to put as little weight in the ball of your foot as you can, because what we want to do is eventually pick our foot up off the floor. My head is not coming up and down. I'm staying in chair pose on this nice plane. Glutes are working. Quadriceps are working. Abdominals, nice and stable. Shoulders are down and back. If you feel your balance will allow, then we'll shift into one foot, pick up the other, set your foot down, shift and lift. Ah, that's a big difference. So do what you can here. If you need to come up out of the pose for a second, take a break, that's great. Knee doesn't have to come up very high, but you certainly could lift it high. As long as you maintain that good position in your chair pose. Let's do a couple more on each foot. Love combining balance and strengthening. All right, once you finish this last one, come back to your chair. As you press up, just bring your hands back, open up the chest, keep your abs pulled in, and then relax the arms by your side. So let's add on to this. If you feel comfortable, sit down into your chair pose, bring the palms to your heart center. 
shift your weight into your left foot, pick up your right, and then reach the ball of your right foot behind you into a high crescent lunge, and then open your arms and squeeze your shoulder blades together. This is our cactus arms, our W arms. And then as your palms press back in, you'll step back into your chair pose. Shift your weight into your right foot, pick up your left foot, reach it back behind you any amount, high crescent lunge, open up. Close palms, step back into chair, and then rise up from your chair pose. So this is sometimes known as flight of the bird. And I want you to do it at your own pace, just alternating sides. You can go really slow, experience the stretch, or you can pick up the pace a little bit and really heat your body up. So we start in our chair pose, palms pressed. Shift into your left foot, lift your right, step back and open. Whenever you're ready, close in and do the other side. So I'm just going to talk about a few things to think about as you're going here at your own pace. On the leg you step back with, once it's back in place, I want you to tighten up your gluteal muscle. This is going to give you a little bit of a, a release in the hip flexor or the front of the hip on that same leg. So that gives us a nice opening through that muscle, which can tend to be really tight. So what's happening here on flight of the bird in terms of your leg work, the leg that's in front is getting strengthening and stabilization. The leg that's in back is working on mobility and flexibility. And then the upper body stretch is just added icing on the cake. You can change that any way you'd like. Make sure your abdominals are in and it's best to keep your eyes on the horizon looking straight forward. Let's get one more on each side. Great balance training. Once you finish one of each, pause in your chair pose, then come up. Nice little extended open heart mountain pose and then relax. Okay, I love levels. So if you wanna to continue to work on what we just did, great, hang in there. The next step, and I'm gonna face you for just a moment, is as we're in our chair pose and we lift the knee up to step back, we are going to rotate it and put it on the floor with your toe pointing toward the side wall. And then we'll just step in. So it's a rotation. Let's do it on just one leg. Okay, that sounds good. So let's do it standing on the left foot. So come into your chair, stand on your left foot, pick up your right knee, rotate it out and turn your foot out. Now, when you turn out, this is gonna also wanna turn your body out. So that's great. We can turn it to the side. We're basically in a little warrior two stance. Then we just step in, chair. Right knee lifts, rotate out, good, and then step in. So the leg that's lifted is rotating, but guess what? So is the leg we're standing on, would you agree? Because it's staying in place, but our pelvis is turning out. So this leg is getting the hip work while you're weight bearing. The free leg is getting hip mobility without weight bearing. You could even take your arms, go warrior two, and then step back in. Let's do two more on this side. Good, one more. Rotate, step, and come into chair and stand up. Ooh, that left quad and glute, really feeling that. Okay, so let's try it on the other side. Come into your chair pose, get a nice good position. 
So you'll weight bear into your right leg, pick up your left, circle the knee, step back with your toe turned out, and turn your torso that direction, and then just step into chair. Lift, rotate, step. So you might be wondering, well, how far do I have to step back? That's all up to you. If you just wanna do this, just do a little small one, that's great. If you really wanna reach it up and way back behind you, get that nice full warrior two, fantastic. Now you are going to notice one side seems a lot easier than the other. I shouldn't say more difficult, <laughs> but that's the case too. One side might seem more difficult. And that's usually because of our balance. We're usually typically very either right or left sided when it comes to being able to balance. It might be a function of our strength as well. For me, it's coming post knee replacement. That's definitely a challenge here. Let's do a couple more. Rotate, step back. Now that front knee should always stay directly forward. We don't want to let that knee turn in. Okay, let's step in and come up and shake those legs out a bit. Okay, we are going to work on flexion and extension of the wrists using the chair or coming down to your hands and knees. So I'm going to show both options. For your chair, we are going to fold from the hips, put our hands on the chair, walk your feet back a little bit and extend your arms out. So you're doing a nice downward facing dog. Your wrist should be pretty straight here. Not a lot of body weight on the wrists. And then I just want you to shift forward with your shoulders now over your wrists any amount, now you're gonna see they're really flexed. So all we're gonna do is go back and forth between downward dog and plank. So if you wanna stay with the chair, remain there. If you're coming down to your hands and knees, we are going to do this from child's pose to kneeling plank. So the hands are extended way out, nice child's pose, Coming forward, any amount, shoulders over wrists, kneeling plank. So I'm going to call this one level two. And then we can do level three by tucking the toes, lifting the knees off the ground, doing your down dog on the mat, and then shifting forward to high plank. Now this one has the most pressure on your wrists. Absolutely. So let's maybe do about oh, a handful more. Working on the ones that work best for you. And if you do have wrist problems, take the one on the chair. It really works out the best. You're able to really control how much pressure that you put into the wrists. Let's get two more. Good, one more. And then back into child's pose or down dog from the chair or the floor. Let's hold three breaths. Slightly tuck your thumbs toward your index finger. So you shouldn't have your thumb way out to the side. We want to be sure we push down into the ball mound of the index finger and the thumb. Try not to roll out to your pinky fingers. One more breath. Good. All right. Let's come back to your down dog from the chair or floor. And we are going to walk the feet back in toward the hands. So here we're at the chair or at the floor. Let's hold a nice little forward bend. Soften your knees a little bit. Let the backs of your legs stretch. And then roll yourself all the way up to stand. 
Pull those shoulder blades back. Just check in, see how you're feeling. If you need to rotate your wrists a couple times, that's great. That's a lot of pressure on that wrist joint. Okay, I want you to step longwise so you're facing me long direction on your mat. Turn your toes both out slightly. If we lift the arms up, we are in what we call five pointed star. So one point is the head, two are the hands, and two are the feet. So really stretch up into that five pointed star. If your shoulders bother you here, you can be at any height with your arms. And then as you exhale, bend both knees and pull your elbows sort of back behind you and tighten up your upper back. So check your knees, make sure they're not knocking in. We want to push those knees out toward the feet. If you do not have the flexibility in your hips to do that, turn your feet more forward so that your knees can go toward your feet because we don't want our feet way out, but our knees in. No bueno. Okay, let's go up to five pointed star. Inhale, exhale into goddess squat. Now I'm turning my palms up because I want to work on my hands and wrists. So as you come down into that W arm, flex as if you're holding two heavy objects in your hands. Good, so working strength of the hips and the glutes, upper back, core is nicely braced. Let's get one more stretch up, reach, sink into your goddess squat. Now just extend your arms out long, keep your palms up and roll your shoulder blades back behind you. So you feel like your biceps are facing the ceiling. And then I only want you to turn your palms down, not your upper arm. And palms up. And palms down. One more palms up. And palms down. Now try to keep this position. So I've got my biceps facing up toward the ceiling, but my hands facing the floor. I want you to straighten out the left leg so you're shifting into the right knee and then to the other side. Now notice how this feels in your upper back and shoulders because I want you to be able to maintain this feeling each time your arms come up into this position. And as we go to the right, let your arms float down. As we go to the left, let them float back up. Can you find that feeling of your shoulder blades connected, your biceps up, but your palms down? It's really hard. So if you say, no, I think I lost it, then just pause there and try to get it back by maybe rotating your palms up first and then put them down. Good, let's do one more. Nice. Now, as we go to the right side, reach across, bow and arrow. Reach across, bow and arrow. And again, please modify this if it bothers your shoulders. You can be bow and arrow here. This is great. So just modify, make it feel comfortable for you. We are rotating our torso to the right side, back to the middle. One more. Then come back to the center, let your arms float down, take a pause, roll the shoulders back. Good, reach up, nice five-pointed star, inhale. Exhale, goddess squat, flex your wrists. Reach up, spread your fingers. Let's just get two more. 
Make sure your shoulder blades are starting to connect the bottom portions of your shoulder blades. Well, one more for good measure. And then hold your goddess squat. Extend your arms out, palms up. Keep your biceps facing the ceiling, but just turn your hands down. Shift to the left side first this time, and then to the right. Now we're gonna to try to maintain this connection in the shoulder blades. As we go to the left, arms come down. To the right, find that position. Try not to lose it. Good, if working the legs and the arms together is just too much to think about, you can pick one or the other. Two more. Biceps up, palms down. One more. Now reach across, twist, bow and arrow. Your bow and arrow can be low. It doesn't matter when you inhale and exhale, just make sure that you are. Make it feel right for your practice. Two more. How's the legs? One more. Come back to center, both legs straight. Lower the arms down. Good, okay, we are gonna come into eagle arms. If you're comfortable staying with your feet this wide, you can stay here. You can bring it in if you want, or even take it wider. So we'll take a nice big chest expansion, open, and then as you exhale, bring your right arm on top of your left and try to touch the back of your shoulder blades. And then we'll inhale. Do the other side, left arm on top of right, Touch the back of your shoulder blades or anywhere you can reach. You're just going to alternate sides. Good. Now, if you wanna work those legs a little bit more, as you open, bend your right knee. And as you wrap right arm, bend your left knee. Then you'll do the other arm. Work in the brain, the body, and the breath, the three Bs. Good, one more. Each side. So on this next one, our right arm will be over the left. You can stay in this lunge position or you can keep your legs straight and stay here or wrap your hands into eagle arms. So my right arm is on top of my left at about at the crook of the elbow and I'm wrapping the palms together with the thumbs toward my face. And then I'm just gonna take these elbows and bring them over this front bent knee, but look to the right side. Now make sure your shoulder blades aren't shrugged up, so press down. This is a great stretch through the upper back, but you can be here. It's fine as well, one more breath. Come back to the center, unravel your arms, open, and then cross left arm on top of right, bend your right knee, you can stay here in the wrap or you can take this into eagle arms. Bring your elbows to the front leg. Look to the back leg. Good job. Front knee should be tracking right over that foot. Whatever angle you've got that foot turned out. Good, let's come back to center. Straighten both legs. 
unravel the arms. One more five-pointed star. And then soften your knees a little bit. Bring your hands to your hips, and we are going to, with a straight back, fold forward. Come into a nice forward bend. Now, you might want to stay about halfway down if that feels like a good stretch. You can come a little lower. You can place your hands on a prop if you'd like. Maybe your chair is in front of you or a yoga block. And then I just want you to come to your depth and then try to relax here in this stretch. You can adjust the width of your feet any amount. Maybe you want to go really wide here and, and get the inner thighs to release as well. Now, while I'm in this position, just because it's nice and handy, I'm going to take my blanket and bring it right to the center because I'm going to use it as we come down to our knees, and I want a little padding there. So what we're going to do is walk our hands toward the area that's the top of your mat, and then put your back knee down onto the floor or the cushion. And we'll come up to a nice kneeling lunge here. Doesn't matter which foot that you have in front, we could have different sides. I just want you to pick one and then we'll do the other one momentarily. So I wanna make sure that your foot is directly underneath the knee. So we don't wanna have this front foot back so that we're doing our lunge like this. Not that it's really bad. It's just not what we're looking for doing today. And there could be a lot of pressure in your knee to have that big deep knee bend. Mm -hmm. Then let's bring our opposite hand down toward the floor or the block, or maybe just on your chair. And we are going to twist open to the opposite side. Now I have my hand up, but that's not necessary. You can bring your hand to your hip or you can revolve it behind your back. Let's just enjoy a twist here. And then I want you to let the back leg hip sink down toward the mat. Actually, I have my hand right on my pelvis and that gives me a little bit of a push down. If your wrist bothers you here, make a fist for wrist so you can actually come up on your knuckles and that keeps your wrist straight so it's not in flexion. Good, all right, let's come out of the twist and then walk yourself back up to neutral. Now you can brace here on the front leg if you'd like. Now instead of a twist, we're going to add a side stretch. So the opposite hand from the leg in front is going to reach up and then we're just gonna barely side bend over toward the front leg side. And you should feel this in the back leg hip flexor you can tighten that muscle a little bit by clenching it. And that's going to give you that reciprocal inhibition where we release the hip flexor. The arm doesn't have to be up to get the movement. You can just side bend over, maybe place your hand on your shoulder. If you can reach the floor with your opposite hand or a block, that's great as well. All right, let's come up out of that side stretch and then reach the hands down. Now I want you to decide the best way for you to switch legs. What I'm gonna do is place both my hands in the middle here so I can step the front foot back toward the padding. Now I'm gonna to have to step the other one forward. So if you can only get it this far, take your hand and help work it along the way until you get it up there. And then come up, make sure that the knee and the ankle are in pretty good alignment. Now, we're not going to be able to get the back leg to stretch if our hips are over the back knee. So you want your hips to be forward of the back knee. So that's going to give you the stretch. Okay, let's bring our opposite hand from the front foot down toward a block, chair, or floor. And we'll twist open. And this arm can be anywhere you'd like. Now, if you just cannot tolerate having pressure on this knee, so right now I'm on my surgical knee and it's still 
it doesn't like this a lot, I mean, I can do it, but not great, then you can actually tuck the back toe under and lift your back knee up a little bit off the floor or even all the way up off the floor. So that's another option as well. But if you tuck the back foot and just take a little pressure off your knee, it's really nice. And one more breath. Come out of your twist. Take a break in the center, maybe support here, or you can have that chair right up here. This is great, I'm really supporting. And then take the opposite hand from the front knee, reach it up and side bend toward the front leg side. Then you're gonna tighten the glute muscle on the back leg side. Squeeze, squeeze releasing the hip flexor on the front of the back leg. Couple more breaths. All right, come back to the middle. And then we are gonna to come to both knees and both hands. Give you a second to get there. So again, if your wrists are bothering you, come up to your knuckles. You can also take a couple of dumbbells and put them down in front of you and you can actually grab the weights and that's gonna give your wrists an opportunity to stay straight. Okay, let's take a nice cat stretch. So tuck your tailbone under, look towards your belly, open up your back. And then I want you to do the reverse, but start with your tailbone first. So keep your spine curved and start to tip your tailbone back first. And then let the rest of your spine follow down, down, down. And very last, slightly gaze forward. So this is spinal extension. It's called cow. Then starting with your tailbone first, try not to move anything else. Tuck your tailbone. Then follow up your spine. Your head tucks very last. This is cat. So this really takes some concentration to do it one vertebra at a time. Start with your tailbone. If you pause, your upper back should still be rounded. Then let your belly drop. Let your chest drop. Then your chin comes forward a little bit very last. Then start with your tailbone. Start to curve. Your chin tucks very last. Start with your tailbone. Start with your tailbone. Let's do one more into cow. So tailbone goes first, belly drops, chest drops, chin glides forward and then find a balance neutral. So we're just gonna let our, bow, our belly lift up a little bit and our head come to neutral. Let's come in to thread the needle. So allow your right hand to float up, inhale, and then you're going to slide your hand underneath your left and lay your shoulder down to the floor and maybe the side of your head if you can come down that far. We'll do this three times. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, reach through. And one more. Once you reach through, try to find a comfortable place here to stay for a few breaths. The left hand can reach up to the top of your mat. I love that stretch or it can also come behind your back. Another great stretch. And then your right hand is free to work strength of your hand. So I want you to make a fist and then spread your fingers wide. This is on your right hand, the hand that's tucked underneath you. Fist and open. Fist 
and open. Two more, fist and open. One more, fist and open. Let's get ready to slide out of this stretch. So place your left hand under your shoulder to push yourself up. Inhale to reach, stretch. And place your right hand down on the mat. Left side, rotate, inhale. Thread the needle. Now your right arm is strengthening your tricep a little bit because you've got to push yourself up as you open out and then you have to control your body down with your right arm. One more. Then find a place where you can remain pretty comfortable here. Right arm can reach up to the top of your mat if you'd like or wrap behind your back. You pick the stretch that you like or maybe the one you need. Then your left hand, the palm is up, you're going to make a fist and open. Fist and open. As you're doing this, check to make sure you're not leaning more into one knee than the other. And it would typically be your left one here. So try to bring equal weight into both knees. Two more fist and open one more. And we need to push ourselves up. So slide the palm of the right hand back under the shoulder very carefully. Push up, inhale, reach. And come back down to all fours. Make your way to a comfortable seated position. So maybe you're coming up to your chair or I love to sit on my blanket here, it kind of elevates the hips. Give you time to get there. Good. Just check in for a second as you're all getting into a comfortable place. Now we're gonna work with a little bit of twists here, so it doesn't matter if you have if you're sitting in a chair, you can have your knees bent, your feet on the floor. If you're here in cross-leg pose, that's great. You can extend your legs forward. It doesn't matter the position. And then bring those arms out to that W position. And we're just going to use the strength of our abs to twist as far as we can to the right side. Look behind you. And I want you to feel the back side of the right side of your back working to pull that right shoulder blade back. And then let's move to the other side slowly. And do your arms have to be like this? No, it's just a nice position to keep your shoulder blades down and kind of squeezed back, but modify if you need to. And then come back to center. Let's pause for a moment, just relax the arms. So when we did that twist, we took our head with us. And I didn't say that, but I think that everybody probably did because that's our usual thing that we do is we turn our whole self. So now I want you to keep your chin toward the screen. Don't move your chin, but turn your body to the right. Try to go back as far as you can with that right shoulder blade, but keep looking forward. So now this is putting us in a little bit more of a rotation for the neck. And then come back to center, keep your head forward, turn, pull that left shoulder back, feel the obliques working. Make sure your shoulder blades aren't creeping up. Come back to center and relax. Now the third way we can do this is turning our head the opposite direction that our body goes. So with our arms in position, we are going to turn the torso to the right side, turn the chin to the left. All the way to the left that we can go with the head, pause there. This is our spiral twist. 
back to the center with the head and the chest. Chest goes left, head goes right. So we have two opposing forces here because we're pulling with the chin, activating the right side of the neck, but the left side of the back and obliques. And come to the center and relax down. So we had some requests for neck and hands, and of course it's our hip month. So I wanna focus a little bit on the neck here, just in a comfortable seated position. If you're in cross leg, if you're like me, I always cross the same way every time. I want you to cross the other way. Your body's gonna say, what? This feels odd. That's okay, we need to do things differently sometimes. So we're going to do two actions with the head. We'll do a rotation to the right, and then we'll nod the chin down. Lift the head back so it's still over the right shoulder, and then go all the way over to the left. Nod the chin down. Come up all the way to the right. Nod the chin down. All the way to the left. Nod the chin down. Come back to the center. Okay, we're gonna do that same progression, but work on the hips here a little bit. So we'll keep the left knee bent, extend the right leg forward. We are in a seated tree pose. This can be done in the chair. You're just gonna to have to work yourself to where you can open up one hip and extend the other leg straight. It's easiest done if you're sitting toward the front of the chair. All right, so the arms, bring them either to your hips and point your elbows back, or you can lace your hands behind your back or even hold your yoga strap behind your back. Once you're in this position, this knee can be bent if you need. We'll look to the right. Chin nods down, come back up, look to the left, chin nods down, bring it up, one more each side, right and nod. Relax the hip on your bent knee, let your knee open out any amount. Come back to center, release the hands from your stretch. Switch sides, right leg goes bent, left leg goes long. And try to sit e even, and that's why I'm up on this uh, blanket because it's easier to sit with your hips up just a little bit. Take your stretch for your upper body, either hands on hips, pull your elbows back, Grab your yoga strap behind you or interlace your fingers. Now we're going to do the other direction first. So look left, nod the chin, bring it up all the way to the right, nod the chin, left, nod. Right, nod, and center. Good, release the stretch of the arms. Soles of both feet come together for our butterfly stretch. Inner thighs, again, you can do this in your chair. Just feels a little bit different. Take your forearms and set them here and give a light pressure outward. If you've got a lot more flexibility, you might be pushing with your hands. If your knees can go closer to the floor, you might be up in here. So wherever your flexibility is, press it out. And then we are going to do, it's kind of like a turkey neck. <laughs> so all I want you to do is pull your chin back towards you like you're going to make a double chin. I'm not nodding it. I'm pulling it back. 
and then put your chin out toward me. Then pull it back. Press it out. I know it feels very different. It's a movement we don't often do. Sometimes when we're sitting over our devices, like our phone, we're in the forward position, right? We have the chin kind of out. So I want you to pull it back and hold it back. So you're kind of making that double chin, but you're not dropping your chin down. You're just pulling back. Keep that in place. Let your arms come out to the side. Take your right arm up and do a little side bend. Keep your chin tucked. Now turn your chin up toward that arm, but keep it tucked. Try not to let it come forward. Pull it in. Face forward and come up. Keep your chin tucked or drawn back. Side stretch. Both sitting bones are down on the floor. Turn your head, but keep the chin retracted. Bring it forward and come up. All right, hands can come back to your knees if you like, or you can reach toward your feet. I just want you to take your upper body through this space any amount that you can. And then just notice where are you feeling this? Is it in your low back? For me, yes. Is it in your inner thighs or your hips? Where is the stretch? And you're just taking it to wherever that tightest zone is for you. So if you're not really feeling it in your hips because your lower back is tight, then that's all the further I want you to go. Take a couple more breaths. Your back should be not really hunched and rounded. Try to get it as straight as you can. And then we'll bring it back up to the center. If you'd like to stay here for closing of class, you can. If you want to go back to a cross leg position, feel free to do that. I'm going to go back to my non-dominant crossed side and sit up tall, lengthen through the spine, feel your abdominals connected, and we'll do three cleansing breaths. So what is a cleansing breath? I'll describe it before we do it. It's in through the nose, out through the mouth, it's in slow and deep, and it's out forcefully and quick. So let's get ready. Exhale completely before you start. Inhale slow through your nose, fully. Open your mouth. <sighs> Just let it all come out forcefully. Two more times, in slow and deep. Good. One more time. And then just breathe normally. Just did three today because sometimes it makes you feel a little bit lightheaded to do that breath. Something you can try on your own at home and maybe try a few more rounds. Helps us to clear out CO2 from the lungs because sometimes we just breathe really shallow and we don't really get all everything expelled from the lungs. All right, let's take a breath together. Inhale, sweep up. Press palms. Draw hands to the heart center, connecting the thumbs to the sternum, to the heart. As we pause to celebrate our hard work today, the dedication we have to the Lisa Bug community and the health of our spirit, mind, and body. And the light that resides within me honors the light in each of you, which translates namaste. Thank you so much, everyone.